Australia. And welcome to Laugh Support. The only lifestyle program worth programming your video for. So we can program you on how to live your life. Remember, we're your real lifestylists. That's right, Sigourney. I'm Dr. Rudy, and I'm a proper doctor, unlike those self-important PhD doctors who only know what they've learnt in books. I'm Sigourney, and as a modern woman, I want to help all Australian women, showing you how to adjust your aspirations for a more achievable and satisfying lifestyle. And I'm Life Support's handyman, Todd. What more do you need to know? And I'm Penny, and I know you know what that means. So tonight, I'm going to show you a top way to stop freeloaders from crashing on your couch. I'll show you how your cuddly teddy bear can be a crafty drinking buddy. And I'll be talking to you, Ben, about a very private matter. Oh yeah, it's going to be a top show. So let's get into it. Many men have the outdated notion that women shouldn't drink. It's ironic, really. They tell us off for getting squiffy when they're the ones who drive us to the bottle. But, as a modern woman, it's only natural that your top priority is to keep your man happy. So, I'm going to show you a great way that you can hide your drinking by making yourself one of these. A teddy bear esky. Simply take a teddy bear. You really should have a teddy in the house anyway. They make you look feminine and vulnerable. Then slice open its back. Pull out the stuffing and replace with polystyrene beans. And sew in a zipper for easy access. And there you have it. A secret portable esky that's uniquely feminine. Of course, if vodka isn't your poison, you can use the same technique to make yourself a teddy cask. So discreet. Goal! That's nice, dear. If it weren't for my teddy bear esky, I'd never make it through footy season. Bottoms up. How's it? Dr. Rudy here. Today I'm going to talk to you about skin cancer. They're those horrible little clumps of mutant cells you get in your face when you're exposed to too much sun. Did you know that if you immigrated to this country after the age of 15, that you are five times less likely to get skin cancer? You see, the sun does most of its damage to native-born Australians when they are children with delicate skin. So this is great news for all us adult immigrants. Whilst those dinky dye Aussies end up looking like pale and pasty vampires, we immigrants can get a fabulous tan. As a medical doctor, I really do encourage all immigrants to this country to get as much sun as possible. Do not slip on a shirt, do not slip on some sunscreen, and do not slap on a hat. Because it's a biological fact that people become more attracted to the opposite sex when they have a tan. Which means that sunbathing will give us immigrants an evolutionary edge. Quite simply, a person with a tan will get more sex. We all subconsciously equate glowing good health with fertility. And despite what our conscious mind tells us, we all enjoy going through the motions of trying to get each other pregnant. So to sum up, sunbathing. If you're a native born Australian, don't do it or you'll die of cancer. If you're an immigrant, get a tan. You'll get more sex. Bye now. Don't you hate it when you come home starving only to find that your flatmate has eaten everything in the house? Even the Mars bar you had stashed away for an emergency like this. Don't worry because I've found the perfect solution. An anorexic makes the ideal flatmate. All she needs is some water and some rice crackers leaving the rest of your food safely in the fridge. A word of warning though, not all eating disorders are so convenient. Just remember that a bulimic can go through an entire fridge in the time it takes you to clean the loo again. So next time you're on the lookout for a flatmate, think thin. He didn't clean himself or wash his clothes and he just smelled really bad and was really unhygienic. I came back, all my furniture is gone and he went to Afghanistan. 
He washed his dog in the bathtub bath. and he didn't clean the bathtub afterwards. And I come back and the mates had, um, had a bit of a fire in the kitchen, you know, and taken off on me. Sneaking into his room, reading his letters. He was cutting himself all the time and he was cutting his wrist. I had all this furniture that was in the um, flat with our bond and um, my flatmate threw it all over the balcony. So we lost the bond. I don't know, she was a skit. What an interesting segment. Oh, it's serious stuff. Getting a flatmate's like getting married after all you live with them. Sometimes you have sex with them and at the end of the day they're likely to rack off with half your stuff. Ain't that the truth? Mm. So tell us about your flatmates, Todd. The best and the worst. Ah, oh, well the best, that's easy. It's me. Yeah, I like to live alone. That way, if you want to wash your work boots in the sink, nobody yells at you. And what about the worst? Oh, God. I used to live with this woman. She was always coming into me room, messing with me phone messages, asking me all these personal questions. That sounds awful. How long have you lived with her for? 25 years. Are you talking about your mum, aren't you, Todd? Yes, I am. Mum, if you're watching, I'll be round to pick up me washing tomorrow. Let's get on to the next segment. And Mum, look, I know you mean well, but please don't sew the sleeves back on me shirts. Take a look at this. It's the next segment. Shopping for clothes by yourself is a little bit difficult because you really don't get decent feedback about how you really look. Shop assistants just want your money, so they'll always tell you look fabulous. So here's a way to make sure you get an honest opinion. As soon as you go into a shop, just pretend that you're deaf. Then, when you're trying on clothes, just listen when your back's turned. God, her bum looks huge in that thing, doesn't it? Well, that's one sale they won't be getting. And I'll just leave a little note for those lovely sales assistants. I love a good fix on a Saturday morning. Even if the thing ain't broke, I'm still partial to backing her out and fixing her. Because if you're on the lawn on a Saturday morning, you're in the firing zone for a fleeting conversation. The ultimate form of conversation between two humans. All you need is a couple of red hot cliches, a wink, and you're right. Here comes one now. G'day, Todd. Car stuff, mate. Yeah, bloody alternator. Can't trust them. Just like women. Can't live with them. Can't feed them to the sharks. It's life, eh? Yeah. And there you have it. A beautifully concise, deep, intellectual, witty, honest, man-to-man -man fleeting conversation. Hey, Todd. Class stuff, mate. I don't know. See, it's fine. I think I'll just get the thing out. The thing. Some people just don't get it. Dr. Rudy here. Men, why is it so often that we leave the urine with feelings of inadequacy and frustration when it really should be a meaningful experience of masculine bonding? Often this is caused by failing to follow some simple urinal techniques. So tonight I'll show you how to make your next pit stop an ego boosting pleasure pee. Let's start with the steps. I recommend this one. It's known as the Anzac Swagger. It tells fellow urinators that you are comfortable and happy in your purging environment. Just allow the hips to swing gently back and forth through the process of expulsion and groan a little upon completion. The lean-to is a position which allows you to spit repeatedly into the trough and maybe even vomit a little if you need to. The more fluid which leaves your body, the higher your status amongst your fellow men. Remember, never allow your hands to touch your penis at any stage, for this will reveal you as a homosexual who is soliciting for sexual favours, and that's not what urinals are about at all. 
facial expressions and conversation topics are also important to get the most out of your urinal experience. Although it is important to keep your eyes to the front, it can sometimes be polite to turn your head and raise an impressed eyebrow at the intensity of another man's urine flow. Always accompany these appreciative glances with comments such as, <clears throat> by golly you've had a few, or making room for more lager mate. These comments can break the ice and often lead to enduring friendships and can help prevent what is commonly known as stage flight. So men, if you apply these simple techniques, you too can step outside that cubicle of shame and proudly claim your rightful place at the urinal. Bye now. Hi, were your parents hippies? Did they name you after some sort of natural phenomena like a river, a moonbeam or a leaf? It sucks, doesn't it? I mean, when you think about it, it's no wonder River Phoenix had such a self-destructive lifestyle. My parents called me Penny, which is okay, but they had to go and spell it like some Italian pasta dish. Anyway, if you have a ridiculous name, I'm going to show you how you can get retribution for all those years of teasing you had to suffer at school. Sometimes you have to be kind to be cruel. So next time it's your parents' wedding anniversary, send them on a trip to Germany. And don't worry about the expenses. Use their credit card. After you've seen them off at the airport, send an email to the German police and grasp them up. You see, over in Germany, there are laws which prohibit parents from giving their children weird names. It's true. I read about it in the paper. So in good old Deutschland, your parents are outlaws. Over there, the cops frown upon anyone spelling penny with two E's. And as anyone who was forced to study World War II at school knows, those Germans can be really strict. Now just sit back and let justice take its course. An Australian couple has been arrested in Germany for breaking local name laws. <laughs> Thanks to my understanding of foreign culture, I've been able to get sweet revenge on about two decades of parental the abuse. holidaying in the town of Bob. Well, Dr Rudy, the letters just keep pouring in. Even though I'm sure I made a point last week of asking all of you at home to stop writing in for a while. Just so we can catch up on our current overload of your problems. Well, Sigourney, I guess some people just can't help themselves. And when you need a problem solved, you should go to the experts. I guess you're right. Some problems need instant attention. Like this one, from Tessa of Guildford. I have never seen anything so distasteful as some of the segments featured on your show. Every time I tune in, there is another story that makes me so irate, I cannot actually believe that they let you people on television. Well, Tessa, don't worry. Life support is here for you, so here's a simple solution to your problem. Don't watch. That's all you have to do. Don't watch. Pick up your remote, aim it at your television set, and turn it off. That's all you have to do. If you don't like our show, don't watch. Another problem solved. And it felt really good. So let's solve another one. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's easy to fix. Just take the engine out of the car, take out the clutch and adjust the tension by hand. You got that? OK. Bye, Mum. Mobile phones. Unfortunately, in this modern age, they are a necessary evil. I know in my work as a tradesman, I use my mobile every day. But it worries me that every time I hold it to my head, radiation is blasting down my ear and into my brain. Now, I don't want to get chemotherapy before I've brought some little tods into this world. So, I obviously need some sort of protection. Now, if you've ever had an x-ray, you'll know professionals use a lead apron to protect them from radiation. But obviously you can't wrap a lead apron around your head. Not without copping a little bit of stick from the blokes at the building site. So, if you want to protect yourself from your phone, your best bet is to make a lead casing for it. And you can easily make a lead casing from all the lead you've already got hanging around your house in the form of lead pencils. Hmm. Yeah, hang on. 
The great thing about having a foam covered in lead pencils, apart from being cancer free, is that you've always got a pencil on hand if you need to take a message. Yep, yeah, Mum. Oh, lovely. When is it? Yep, yeah, hang on. I'll bring some Devon. A lot of people are very wary about giving out their credit card details over the internet. Well, there are a couple of things you should know. One is that a series of international court decisions has put the responsibility on the credit card provider. So if you find an internet charge on your statement and it can't be connected to you, the credit card company has to refund your money. No questions asked. What this means is that you can shop with confidence and far beyond, in fact. So what you need to do is get yourself a credit card buddy, someone like Penne here, who you can trust. Then you simply give each other your credit card details and go on a shopping spree on each other's cards. And a month later, when you get your statement, you simply ring up the credit card company and tell them that someone has been fraudulently using your card. After all, what would I want with makeup, boots and slipknot CDs? There's no way that I would order back issues of the Phantom or a complete set of bodybuilders free weights. Yes, the postage on those from America was horrendous, but it doesn't matter because we both got all our money back. And the only thing we had to pay was $20 for the post office box. And we put that in Todd's name. Yes, an excellent idea. So get yourself a credit card buddy today. Then sit back, relax, and go shopping. Oh, Slipknot bootleg! I have to get it. Go ahead, Penny. It's my treat. Tonight, I've got a cheeky new idea for the modern woman. Just how do you keep the romance sizzling if you want to sleep with the same man more than once? After he's taken you to his place and he's taken you at yours, things can get a little, well, dull. So, here's an idea. Why not spice things up a little and get down and dirty with your man in a sleazy motel? Of course, you'd never be seen dead in one of those places. So I'm going to show you how to recreate that sleazy motel room feel in your very own home. Mmm, a potent purpuree that's sure to get you both in the mood for some motel mischief. Move in a bar fridge. Stocked with peanuts, miniature spirits and novelty condoms. Just remember to remove one of its feet so that you get that authentic motel rattle. Mood lighting is so important. Of course, the idea of being close to strangers will always heighten your arousal. So hire a suitable movie, turn up the volume and play it in the room next door. It's so easy to turn your bedroom from this into this. So there you have it. A makeover with some simple sleaze means that your two night stand will last longer and feel fresher. And if it's sleazy enough, he might just leave a tip. Oh, lingerie, lingerie every time. Buy some nice lingerie, bring some flowers, um, write them a poem. <laughs> Watch pornography. <laughs> Kama Sutra. <laughs> Get rid of the missionary position, you know, and just try experimenting. Pretend you're other people, you know what I mean, and just like have an affair with each other and things like that. Time up. Pour wax on him. Like, everybody probably does that, but I don't know, do something a little bit different. Of course you're welcome. Stay as long as you like. I've got plenty of room. No, no, no. You can have my bed. I'll crash on the floor. Okay. <laughs> okay, bye. <sighs> Don't you hate it when the Londoner whose floor you slept on for four months invites herself to stay? <sighs> Quid pro quo my ass. I mean, when you're a backpacker, you get used to having no privacy, no space and nowhere comfortable to sleep. But when you're back at home, the last thing that you want is some freeloader interrupting the tranquility of your environment. Now, there's no need to put up with an unwanted house guest. 
Of course, you don't want to appear rude. So rather than saying no to your friend, just make it impossible for them to enter the country. Now, it's not an easy thing stopping someone's visa application, especially if they're English. The Department of Immigration will let any old POM just stroll on into the country. Unless they're a Holocaust denier. A Holocaust denier is someone who publicly argues that there never was a Holocaust. And even if there was, it wasn't really that bad. All you have to do is look up David Irving on the internet. Hack into those web pages and substitute your friend's name for David's. There's no need to call the Department of Immigration yourself. Just tip off the local Jewish community and let them do the hard work for you. Hello. How come this woman, Jane Smith, is coming to Australia? Who is Jane Smith? I'll tell you who Jane Smith is. She's a Holocaust denier. She is. She's saying all the same things as David Irving. Take a look for yourself. It's all over the internet. I have to go. I've come over all fact That's me off the hook from having to play hostess. Ah, oh, it'll take her months to cut through the red tape, clear up all those misunderstandings and make amends with the Jewish community. Which gives me plenty of time to change my address and get an unlisted phone number. Using power tools can be pretty dangerous. If you do happen to cut off your finger, or in this case, your thumb, then take a tip from Todd. Before you black out from blood loss, make sure you tape the digit somewhere handy. Like your forehead. That way, when the ambulance officers arrive, they won't have to waste time looking for it. Todd, are you all right? Oh, yeah, don't worry yourself, Penny. It's all smoke and mirrors. Television. Don't believe everything you see on the telly. Really? Yeah. It's just a little demonstration segment. Oh, couldn't you tell by my performance? Well, can you believe it, but here we are at the end of another program. Yes, the end of our sixth show. As good a reason as any to make a fool. English rhubarb fool, served with custard. Why is it called a fool? Because you're a fool if you eat English cuisine. Anyway, tune in next week. Because we may have a couple of surprises for you. Until then, remember, when no one else is there for you, we are. Good, Good night, night, Australia. Australia.